Welcome to About You, I'm Connie Hogan. Well, my guests today represent a departure from the norm. I actually have a little diversity here on my set with a mother-son duo who are extremely talented. If you are a left brain person, I think it's left brain like me, I know you think, while wow, the right brain people, I'm so jealous because they're so create creative and artistic. Linda Schinkel Rodney and her son Teddy, or Theo, which we're deciding what to call him, Theo or Teddy, they are incredibly talented individuals who own Schinkel Fine Art. And they've had this, the studio in Detroit for uh, 12 years, I think now. And they're currently preparing to go to Miami for Aqua Art Miami. Welcome, you guys. It's so exciting to have yes. you here, especially it's you. It's great to be here. Yeah, yes. first time for me. First time, that's right, yes. on the women's show called About You. That's wonderful, but your mother's been here before. Well, yes. So it's been a minute, though. It's been, been a minute. while. We said, well, that's right, six yeah. years ago. That's, yeah. Six years. And so, you were here with another uh, business, more of a business-related or artistic-related show. You're still talking about, yeah, oh, right, yeah, but still right. talking about our work. Still talking about oh, your work. Mm -hmm. So which one want to kick off and give us a little history of everything? Do you want to go first, oh, wow. mother before son? Yeah. Well, yeah, often um, I love talking about our work because it's really all about what we're doing. And we feel like what we are doing is engaging others to help them with their lives. It's been a mission to find art that really communicates and interacts with others. It is, and, and yours uh, is so unique and... I feel like we have done that, and I'll, I'll let Ted explain the oh, work. Well, well, again, it's, you know, f from the get-go, you know, t again, talking about, you know, left brain, light brain, yeah. um, you know, I myself was diagnosed with severe dyslexia very, very early on, and again, you know, but what part of that, you know, you know, leans into is a more developed right brain, mm -hmm. which then puts some strain on that, you know, left brain connection. And, and one way in, in I know, schooling and, and working with, uh, through the tutors, you know, art and art project was always, you know, one, um, you know, probably the main way that I, you know. That you, you know, communicated. Con communicated and then connected. But also, too, it was then our connection together. And so that's the thing is we've had, uh, you know, Schinkel Fine Art as a uh, business. We've both been working together since mm -hmm. uh, uh, 2010 now. Right. So guys, it's, uh, so it's that's, a, that's, a do that's a dozen years. That's hard to wait. And now it's been, it's been, you know, there's been changes and evolutions and where we are today is um, I'm rather excited about. But, um, but again, it, it goes back to, you know, us working on projects, you know, together and kind of, um, her helping you know myself and now again i'm kind of then you know helping her along mm -hmm. to again to um make this you know connection with ourselves but then then also to the the people that we want to then you know share the work with and help mm -hmm. them um you know you know get to the same um uh you know viewpoint or same mm -hmm. or similar mm -hmm. kind of perspective well you know the skill set of his generation and my generation is is very different right and so a lot of times yeah he he's helping me a lot i, I wouldn't be able to do this right. without him right. and then other times you know i can help him right. but basically what he's saying too is that we have worked together yeah. Yeah. and we worked together on an art project ever since he was really little wow i mean you know, really when he was two years old. And he has a younger brother. His younger brother wasn't like that. I mean, we did things together, but Teddy was always interested well, like in the go, arts. Well, like going to the symphony, uh, going to, you know, see, uh, uh, you know, the Broadway opera. plays, even, you know, opera. You know, these aren't things as a, you know, as a, you know, toddler child right. that they're normally kind of very much into. Right. Now, I, I know... Uh, my mom, she did a good job with uh, making sure I had the, uh, the the cherry bonbons. I particularly remember looking forward to those when yeah. um, we we lived um, uh, uh, outside of Lansing at the time. So we always go to the Wharton Center and see the different you know, plays that would you know come through there or, or symphony or whatever have Which you. Which is always great because they would come for a few days before coming to Detroit, right. and then we would go yeah. we would go to art museums. We, I was just talking about the Monet because we just saw the Van Gogh, which was yes. fabulous. Oh, did you see that? Yes, I took him to see the Monet exhibit when he was a little boy. He was probably about five or six. And of course, Schinkel Fine Art. When we talk about the history of Schinkel Fine Art, so I took him to that. So it was an opening 
of Carl Frederick Schinkel's oh, work. That. Yeah, that's the fascinating story. Yeah, so the opening was at the Chicago Institute of well, Art. Well, the first time his any of his work was, you know, in, in you know, in this country, um, you know, really because, you know, you know, Schinkel while being German, he really was, you know, big in Berlin mm -hmm. and and all of Prussia. So oh, most okay. of that all all of his, you know, stuff was all, you know, behind, you know, the Berlin Wall. And it wasn't until you know, after you know that came down, then then you know after eighty nine when the yeah. wall fell, and, and, and I think that 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 um, uh, that uh, uh, opening or that exhibition in, at the Chicago Institute of Art when was that like ninety four? No, it was before that. We so it was shortly after the wall came down, a couple the years 92. after. Yeah, I think it was ninety two. Oh, wow. Ninety two. It's one. It's one right. of my. Fr I can remember it very well. And again, it's one of those. He was born in eighty six. So uh -huh. yeah. So again, we're, we're talking five, so or, six, yeah. five or six yeah. here, and, and that always, you know, stuck with me. It was me. in the fall, I remember. So you would have been six. Yeah. yeah. So it would have been so six. Okay. Okay. But it, it definitely left a, you know, a large. Impression. Which was so cool yeah. because they invited all the Schinkels that were related to Carl Frederick Schinkel. That's why we went. It was a small, wow. special opening, wow. and there's only about fifty of us in this country. Really. Yeah, there's more Schinkels, but again, the ones that are, that are particularly related, related to, him. to Carl Frederick. And, and just a little backstory: so Carl Frederick Schinkel, he, uh, he he's one of the you know the the great artisans, but he's an artisan and an architect, really right. uh, for Germany. But like right. I said, at that point in time, is before Germany was unified. Yeah, it he, was 1780 to 1840. He, and so at that time, wow. Berlin was the capital of Prussia. So it's a little bit different kind of demographics, you know, back then as as we think of, you know, well, Germany, what Germany is, is today. I mean, as we know, crazy story and, and we've, history. That and we've been to Berlin. Realize. Yeah, and we've been to oh, Berlin since you? the last time we spoke. So we went to no Berlin kidding. just before oh. the... 2018. Yeah, really? yeah just before that. COVID. Really? 2018. And we yeah. had a special tour with a special guide who knew Carl Frederick Schinkel's work. And there's a whole Schinkel Square. The Schinkel Square. He was so he was the first person wow. in Germany given a square that was That's not amazing. a government fi official or of uh, or military. That's so the, the first common impressive. person given a square. It's wow. the it's the highest rent area in Berlin. Schinkel wow. Square. I mean, right across from Museum cool. Island is where Schinkel Sounds Square good. is. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't pick a better a better spot. Okay. So, so that's uh, why we changed the name spelling. Because it got anglicized, which so many spellings did. Right. I know it's a big that confusing. Was a big, it was, so we yeah. go by both. We go by both, and yeah. both work. So that's why we changed the spelling. But but officially, it's E L S H I. Yeah, yeah, C H I N K E L. Yeah, officially, it's Carl Frederick's spelling. Yeah. So again, harkening back to you know our our you know so German which is so exciting roots, if you will. Yeah. I mean, it was so it was you know interesting seeing how. Uh, again, so he was a, a you know an artist and an architect. So often mm -hmm. That's he would how I of he it. would have these um, um, the, uh, these designs or like these build or, or he would he would have he would he would have the plan to go ahead and you know design and construct this building, but then to get the funding he would go ahead and make a you know do a big painting you know with that building then in place. And then that painting would travel and gain some prominence, and that was a primary one of the primary ways he would get funding mm -hmm. for his projects. Kind of like a lost leader at Kroger's or something. <laughs> Just yeah. bring it in, right? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. exciting. Because that's business he, concepts. Right? He was self-made. It wasn't like he, right. he came from right. great wealth. He didn't, and right. he ended up achieving great prominence. So we're hoping to follow in those shoe, shoe steps. Because now we're so excited about the show in Miami. Yes. Because 10 years ago, we launched what our original mixed media sculptures. We call it, it's two dimensional, but it's mixed media sculpture because we work sculpturally. And one of the things we learned along the way, because we used to paint over the entire piece, that well, people want to see more of the metal. Well, it was the evolution of just mm -hmm. of the process. It went from, you know, and, and even before. Uh, we started um, uh, working together. I would say in like uh, the early 2000s, um, uh, uh, my mom, she was, uh, uh, well, she was always, you know, a painter working with watercol mm -hmm. watercolors and and, um, and, oil. and oils, you know, both. I know you, you, you did a lot, a lot with both. And, uh, and then early 2000s, she got into photography. 
and then uh, and printing photography on canvas, a gicle process. Now, that, that's commonplace today, but early 2000s, that still was kind of a newer thing. Okay. So then what she would do then to the, uh, those canvas pieces, and then she would augment it with paint and then paint on top of the canvas, being that already is a canvas. Now, again, something that you see more of, uh, you know, you know, today, but at that point in time was still something kind of new. Mm. So that was a great precursor for then what we'd be doing to the uh, metalwork. So again, early 2000s, you know, she was, you know, doing photography uh, uh, and she had uh, some of her work and, you know, a couple of different galleries, whatever. And then the recession came around you 08. Know, in 08, no, 08. Okay. and a lot of the galleries that she was in, you know, closed down. And so she kind of, you know, put her um, her art, uh, you know, pursuits a bit on on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Now again, 2009, I, I graduate from Denison University. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, and then so what I was I was a economics and a cinema double major, which okay. both sides of the brain. It, it, you know, wow, so you're in both. I'm only on one side. Same. Well, I mean, the, the right side definitely was the, the more uh, uh, dominating. The, the yeah. dominating side that came to ease. I definitely struggled through the, the economic side, but I did that too. Though. But it, but in but but to where we are now, it, it, it's funny. It's the in, you know so you know, fast forward a little bit, but well, right. I'll come back to you know, our evolution. But you're working with NFTs, having an understanding of you know these non fungible tokens, this crypto art that's been okay. You know, uh, um, again, it's taken, it's kind of, you know, cooled down just with kind of the general kind of, you know, uh, market, you know, in general. No, it but really still, has, yeah. Yeah, it really has. But still is, is very much in the future of her, and so. where, where oh, the, the NFTs art is are. going to be going. NFTs are. And then, and, and, and to create those, you know, having an understanding of economics and also then, you know, cinema is actually a, a, sol a pretty good pairing. And the reason why NFTs, there's a, a market for them, it doesn't have to be crypto, but NFTs, okay. it's visual art. And what it does, though, is it just makes this digital image that, that people can project on screen. So people who want to have a screen projection of the work, that's well, what. Well, it's, it's a screen projection, and just as, um, as technology and, and, and things, um, and, and this things evolve over time, you think about having, you know, holograms would be more of a thing. So you'd be able to you know, display work in holograms, or you talk about, you know, living in the metaverse and seeing things in there, and then mm -hmm. that's another application when you have that. Now again, all these things are way too early and hey, still that's being just the embryo you know, adopted. Stage. We're and it's changing. But, but that's yeah. good. But, and then the, the way the NFTs are, they're forever. So they're going to then be, you know, how depends on how you construct them, but also to make them compatible you know, in these, uh, you know, different realms. So that's another, another part of I think of a lot of people have, you know, this is getting into a whole other, you know, field. Sure. But as far as Wall Street is concerned, sure. a lot of people have kind of delved into this not fully knowing what they're doing. Sure, oh, yeah. sure. And I there's mean, been a lot of, well, there's been a lot of money made, but a lot that's Sure, well, hyper, absolutely. Hyper speculation. And, and I, hyper, I, right. And I, I think just, you know, with, with the way the news cycle is and, and in, in social media and itself, social it kind of makes this all big commotion and you don't want to... It scares you, you, people. Well, you, oh, you, you, it scares people and also you, you, but it makes people anxious. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to miss out. So right. you jump mm -hmm. in. Yeah, well, that's what people had done. Yeah, My you, understanding is that <laughs> so many people got into so much stuff. And well, it's, you, like, you, oh, well it's like you jump in without knowing, but it's like if you see like a, you know, a pond or some water and you jump in without knowing, right. well, heck, it could be really shallow. That's exactly and then right. You're paralyzed. That's a good and then, analogy. Yeah, that's it, it really yes. is. Yeah. That's exactly what's so, happened. So, mm -hmm. With our art evolving, so we want to talk about yeah, yeah. So, I love this one. Yeah, so, thank you. So, oh, so again, no, no, so, I'm glad you love this one. We so do how, too. so how, like the well, just again, so 12 years ago we started working, and it just was working with her her images. That I was like, you know what? That's uh, you have the setup to do like a local show. Um, I think uh, it was like the Northville Northville Christmas oh, okay. Fair. Oh. And we're like, you know what, let's, let's, let's take your old work and, and print a couple new pieces. I think we printed them at Costco. And, uh, and they, yeah, let's just you know, give it a shot and see how it goes. So again, we must have been the only like 
the you know actual artists, artists over there. Yeah. I don't know if they held whatever. Everything else were crafts. It, but it, right, but, right. but it was it was one of the only shows, if not the only one, where we actually sold the piece while we were hanging it. No kidding. <laughs> and it was you know, and oh it was God. and at that Exciting. point it wasn't a small one. It was a. You know, I, I remember it was the a, piece too. Anchor a lot. Yeah, 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 we, both yeah, yeah we both remember. It. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think we had a bunch of small. I think we sold like thirty some items or whatever. Oh my goodness. That first wow. show. It was which, crazy. Which yeah. was crazy. But yeah. again, that definitely that definitely kind of spoiled us. We were like, okay, yeah, we got this. Like, yeah. So then we rented like a little U-Haul trailer, right? Like a little guy. And then we went down to Florida. And we both drove, and you couldn't oh, drive over like again, we, 65, you know, when and, you rent and, a trailer. And this, was, this was Miami. There's restrictions. So again, this was also. It was all in Miami. It was yeah, also Miami. Miami. Really? Yeah. yeah, it was we also drove Miami. Now down. this was the Coconut Grove, like, um, right. um, you know, art, you know, art fair. Right. But then there was a couple of congruent shows. So we 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 get to the hotel. The show that we thought we were in, we weren't in that one. There's like three shows going on. We were in the the lowest tier of those three shows. So we get to then, you know, go set up. You know, it's a, it's a new setup for us and how we were doing it. I, did we sell one piece? Yeah, we, did, we did. We did. We, we, we always Sonora did at the end, the at show. the last day. <laughs> so at the last day, we did. But it was it, well, as Teddy was said, we were in this small show next to. The big show, so oh, again, uh, getting into the logistics, not really knowing what you're getting into. Yeah, right. exactly. yeah. So logistics. So, what we were saying too, it's been such a huge learning curve. Well, the, well you the, have to. You well, just, there, there's something yeah. like well, there, yeah. well, there, we learned to to do it like that, to be in control of printing, is is a, to really make. And it. artists along the way have always helped us. And yeah, and that and that's the big thing. A lot of thing. people, I feel like they're our angels. So from that, the big community. Yes. So from at that point in time, we then got our own printer. And then the quality of our work then improved. But then, mm -hmm. and also too, in, in, in creating, you know, the work, you know, start to finish more or less, realizing, okay, it's not just about the image that you're putting on, you know, uh, uh, onto the piece itself. It's about the whole process along with it. And then, you know, around that time, you know, 2010, 2011, you know, printing on metal, particularly aluminum, that was you know a newer thing at that point, so that was something I wanted to try out. And it was very expensive, so Ted says I can figure this out. I'm well, like, it's yeah. able to you know print it you know on yourselves. Yeah. You can you know layer with a coating, and I was able to retrofit this uh, Epson inkjet printer. Just a standard printer. Well, not wow. standard. I mean, it still was a 48 inch you know, oh, you know but 48 inch she standard said, printer. You know, old, but it's meant wow. it's meant, meant for, for inkjet paper. paper and wow. canvas. My and, goodness. Wow. And basically, I made the the printer think that the metal was um, uh, matte board, and it was mm -hmm. a thinner okay. gauge metal than what we use now, and and um, that's when you know, and then on, on the sheets that we had, and then if you had you know pre-cut sheets, uh, they were like half off. So I did some tests with those and. And showing people the first samples, there was some like a so aluminum it won't rust, but it will oxidize and mm -hmm. and create patina with with you know different you know elements um, you know um, you know added to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and mm -hmm. when we showed that to different individuals, they said, you know what, if you had like this little blob over here, but if you had that throughout the entire you know the entire image, the entire piece. You know, this that would, would be, be interesting. That'd be desirable. That'd be interesting. It's like That's okay. Funny. So we learned. We learned from our audience. So that, and we listened. So at that point in time, it was like okay. That's. It, it, so it was about taking you know the the metal piece, or just you know the image printed on the metal, and then bringing it to life. I see. Kind of then mm -hmm. you know within the metal work. So mm -hmm. really, that's what it was. It was, okay. Still you know having you know the, the you know the photograph. And then working, you know, the metal work to kind of, you know, make it kind of holographic. That's why, okay, you know, metallogram okay. kind of comes from that, you know, metal hologram. And so then, yeah, are, oh, those, are those terms patent or trademarked by you guys? Yes, That's yes. what I thought. Metalgram, metalgram we, and mirrogram. Metalli so metallogram metallogram. actually is registered now. You have to wait a, a, a little while. You have to use it. And okay. basically, according to the patent laws, and uh, metallomere is... Is is trademarked, so it's not registered oh. yet because we haven't had it that long. So, but it's in the process of incredible. being, because we figured, why not brand it? Right. Um, but what I was going to say oh, then yeah, is, um, so then we finally got this body of work together and we launched our Metallogram in Miami, which is ten years ago. Oh, ten so it's really cool that now ten years later, we're going to a better show. 
And it's a show that an art advisor had, we met with an art advisor in New York in the spring, and she loved our work, and she recommended that we try to get into the show, and we were accepted. How that how like that's, how we get, that's how we decided to do this show. And, and we're in it, and we're showing it as a gallery, because we are a gallery, in addition to being co-artists, the gallery space that we have is our space in Detroit, and we will have it as a gallery space. Things were coming along, and then COVID. Of course, everything stopped. And we took that time then to continue to focus on our work and evolve. And that's when we came up with the Metallo Mirror, was during COVID. Ted figured out that this would be another layer. And that, you know, evolution. And, and it's all about, you know, it's, you know, Having, having, you know, different layers that are, you know, interactive, right? And then so the, the way the metallograms kind of work is that light hits the metal and then uh, reflects back through the image. And then that in, in that way kind of then, uh, you know, backlights, you know, the image that's there. But then it also, you know, mixes with light. So as you, you know, as the lighting changes or as your perspective or angle of viewing changes, how the piece then looks, you know, changes as well. And, and then the mirror too, because yeah, for sure. we're all about that everything that influences you, that we're all connected. This is, this is one of the messages that underlie our work. And so that's why the mirrors, you become part of our work. Yeah, so that's the, the other... The becomes part of our I work. I can just see this in a beautiful contemporary, like Park Avenue kind of. Absolutely. Or anywhere. Absolutely. Miami, that, well, that's Absolutely. all anywhere. Any, anywhere. Any, any, anywhere. International. Yeah. I mean, Bluefield Hill, it's right, contemporary. Right. But what's cool, too, is they're mixing traditional, like my home here in, in Bloomfield is right. traditional, but I have this beautiful contemporary art. And I love, I love that mix. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. So now your studio down on Jefferson. Yes. Because like if someone wanted to go in there, yes. they can't go in. By appointment. By appointment, right. by appointment right only. I didn't only open that. by appointment. We, we started see. some. Probably it was when, when when we had like the you know the break for COVID. We we're like okay. Oh, yeah, we we had a couple different ideas and the directions that we wanted to take. You know the uh, you know the studio and then you know the the, the yard itself and then because it's a whole strip. It goes from Jefferson to Woodbridge. It was one of those strip farms, and it was always residential. So Woodbridge is just basically the block behind us. So if you turn, okay. if you turn on, um, it's right across from the New Myers. Yeah. So the, the new, you know, the, the new, river, the people river. who know so the if, New if, Myers if, downtown. If you go downtown, if you go in downtown, at 375, if you get off from Jefferson, you, you can go towards the Renson, or then you know head head towards Belle Isle okay. and Gross, Gross Point. Point. Yeah. Then you know. Right there. But we're uh, downtown. We're we're not close. You're to, close to the Renson. Oh, yeah, like a, Renson's like, like, are a, like a half backyard. mile away from. Uh, I there for, you know, we're like a half mile away from the Renson. Oh, so and we have dropped off work at the re people who who work there. Purchased we it. have dropped off work at the Renson. Yeah. And they've come. They've come. That's people have location. walked to our spot. So we, when we we did have more open hours before COVID, yeah. and then we had all these plans to renovate. And we're in the process now, oh, and it. we're hoping probably summer, spring, summer. I mean, Ted's doing some of the work, but mostly, yeah, we're, we're working slowly, slowly. Yeah, as I mean, it's the oldest brick house yeah. in the city of Detroit, right? So yeah. sort of like, you know, 1840. You guys have so much historical so, stuff. Uh, yeah, it's well, that's, that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of, you know, you know, good energies come together, and, and, right. and, the, end, you know, and the end product that then it produces is, um, you know, something... Uh, you know, worthwhile. At least you know, that's the hope, and, and that and that seems to be the uh, traje trajectory of things. But yeah, so the the house is about 3,400 square feet, wow. but the whole What's lot itself is about wow. 9,000 feet. So yeah. it's a it's a decent sized property. But you For wouldn't, sure. you know, walking by it, you wouldn't necessarily know. It's kind of, you know, tucked in, um, and again, it's this long, you know, strip uh, lot. But then with this secret garden courtyard. That's uh, and 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 certified by University of Michigan as the oldest wisteria in the Midwest, so that's always a. Uh, it's on the National Historic Register. So I think what's interesting. Oh, so it? Okay. it was built in 1840. So right when Carl Frederick Schinkel was dying, our little house there was built. Yeah, yeah that's, So that's, I think that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. It's the same year. Wow. Yeah, and so that it's it's on man. yeah the National Historic Register. Oldest brick. So there are some older wooden structures, and they happen to be on well, that the same. Yeah, well, on the same on the same street, yeah. the same block, the to the Trowbridge House, I right. think, is like eighteen twenty seven. Right. Yeah, and that's but you know, but also too with being the oldest brick house, eighteen forties. That's when masonry was still like a you know a, it was a, a new thing, a new a new technology. All those are handmade bricks. 
And it used to be the Morass House Museum. Oh, the Detroit Historical okay. Society operated out of there when the city owned the property. The city owned the property from 1970 to about 2000, and they renovated it. So that's why it was pretty much renovated. Then when the city ran out, ran out of funds, then they sold it to another uh, private person who used it as a law office and their private home. And then we purchased it too as a mixed space. Mm -hmm. It's for Ted to live and for our okay. studio mm -hmm. and showroom. And it's it's been our studio the whole time since we purchased it in 2016. It's been a showroom a little off and on and we have had some shows there, but not mm -hmm. since COVID. No, no, and, and also don't forget the Detroit Garden Center operated out of there from the, in the same time period as the historical right, society. Right, that's important. From the early 70s mm -hmm. to like, um, what was it, like uh, 2000, uh, 2006? Yeah, and we eight, often you know, meet like, people who are so happy that we have the house. They've been to the house. Oh my goodness. They've been to shows, either flower shows or historical society, and they're like, oh, we're so glad to know who owns it now. Wow. And because then we, it will be open mm -hmm. to the public. And well, it's we, a great location. Thank you, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's, and as Ted is saying, it's a location that well, is it's becoming. A growing, well, it's a growing location. Again, it is, yeah. I mean, you could say the Myers across the street. I did, I'd forgotten. You know, I would say. <laughs> I don't yeah. go down there as much as I used to no, yeah. well, no, no, every no, day, you know. Sure. No, it's, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's you know one of the issues for Det Detroit has been also having, you know, you know grocery stores or early like kind of shopping. I and, 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 yeah. and, you know, like, you know, the Whole Foods that they've you know had in Midtown you know a while ago has been there but uh, but the Myers seems to be a really good fit and it, and the whole mm -hmm. kind of area around there is really kind of cleaned up mm -hmm. like around it too it's just it you know it, it's, it's more well lit yeah it mm -hmm. certainly just feels uh, yeah well, you're pretty more close to the downtown corridor too which is Woodward and Jefferson because yeah. that's a very active that I can say because there's a lot of um, like when the when the sure, fast fashion happens sure, we show sure, you there sure. and it's like you know there's just so much going on sure. with like the restaurants it's like you wouldn't even sure. believe people wouldn't believe that was Detroit because people who've lived here and they come back they're like wow that's so exciting I know it and, and, and it has such a beautiful view I mean who else is on the river <laughs> you know like that well, yeah cities. I mean and, and it's being, more beautiful than most and we've cities. got our freighters that go by which oh, are so charming I, think, well, I miss that wasn't Detroit Riverfront rated like the number one like yes I it think was it was recent yeah by niche recently. magazine yes. yeah yeah, so that, that's come a long way because I know it used to be whereas okay the Windsor Riverfront was so much better than than the Detroit one. Yeah, and and you know it's still you know nice over there, but it's just you know a different kind of feel. But whereas now, I know that the project to have a you know consistent river walk from Belle Isle to uh, the Ambassador Bridge. Is that still underway? But they're but they're, ma they're That's making a long progress way, for it. Yeah, maybe more over five miles, I think. So is, back yeah. back to the work. Done. So it's yeah, really we're exciting. We're going to have to start. It's hard to believe. Oh, we're almost wow. to the end. Wow! Wow! <laughs> we wow. Need an hour. Wow. Usually, I just want to say, you know, get through it. Yeah. But yeah. So talk about well, what you want to say. So, so we're going to yeah. launch this at In our Miami. yes. We we have not showed this product other really? than at MoCAD and MoCAD now, say loved the name it. Of this. Okay, so this is a metallomere. Metal and this piece happens to be it's going on. And it's, it's gonna going be on. it's oh, that's the name yeah, of it. oh, yeah. Cool, yeah. And it's this piece as well as it's gonna be part of the NFT because our NFTs are a combination of our analog work, which is our our extra like this would be an analog well, a physical piece and and visual digital. Yes. So there's in three components, which is, makes it you know it's a it's a physical and digital combination. So it's the uh, physical metal metallogram and then lit with theatrical dimatic you know uh, lighting, and then and we don't the have the lighting here, but we will. No, but but, but the, you know, the, the samples yeah. that we can then right, show. Right. Yeah. And the samples that they'll have. Yeah. Yeah. But then using then this mirror layer um, as a um, as a template for a uh, digital animation, and then putting those things, those three things together, and that is the digital NFT piece. And and we're going to be debuting, you know, that with Metalomirs okay. at so our next show time in Miami. Okay, we have to talk about the NFTs vis-a-vis -vis Wall Street. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, All right. Because we'll get... I, that I'm already starting to. <laughs> okay. But no, there's a lot guys, there. You guys, it was wonderful having you here today. I wish we could go on and on. And usually I don't say that, but I wish we could. Thank you so much. This is in best of luck in Miami. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Doesn't take it by storm. Thank you. It's Thank wonderful. You for Thank you. Good about be that. Be sure to go to Schinkel Fine Art in Detroit.